Each of the buttons on the stop clock has a secondary function. The start stop button also acts as the channel switch. Press and holding the button changes channel, in this case to channel 2. Releasing the button then shows you what the standard time is for that channel. That can be altered independently of the first channel. Switching the channel back is as simple as pressing and holding the button again. It goes back to channel 1 and the other time is displayed. The channel is indicated by one or two lights on the channel indicator display. The second button is the focus or options button. Pressing and holding the options button brings up the word user on the display and that is a number of user preferences and subsequent presses of the options button cycle through the different options and then using the up and down buttons changes the status of each option. So the first one is the light saver. This stops the light uh, when you, you hit the focus button staying on for too long and it times out. So you can either have it off or on. I think I prefer it on because I have very hot bulbs. Pressing the options button again moves on to the next one. In this case this is the display brightness. Pressing the button cycles through three levels of brightness. For colour workers, they typically have the lowest brightness setting because it has the least chance of fogging the paper. For the purposes of now, I'll leave it on the bright setting. Pressing again goes on to the beep mode. This basically gives a ticking sound when it counts down and certain little beeps for certain functions to tell you it's done something. Again, you can either have on or off. Pressing the option button again takes you to the test strip mode. There are two test strip modes, either incremental or separate. With incremental test strips, the base exposure is made and then subsequent parts of the print are covered up as parts of the test strip are further exposed. The separate test strip mode, indicated by SEP on the display, is done by separate exposures for each test strip, which are entire exposures. This is a good way of doing um, a particular part of a print at different exposure settings, whereas this one is good if you want a general um, test strip for a large expanse of, say, grass or something, and it doesn't really matter that it's each exposure is not on the same particular part of the negative. Pressing the Options button again takes you to the Safe Light mode. This has two settings, Auto or and On. And these two settings alter the way that the safe light is turned on or off during the enlarger being on. So sometimes you want it to always switch over so that you can see what you're doing when you're dodging and burning. And at other times you want it to be on when you're making the exposure. At all times it switches the safe light off when you're just focusing, just in case you want to use a metering system. The next is the standard stop size that's being used for the, the ups and downs in time. At the moment it's set to fourths or a quarter of a stop and I can make that smaller to twelfths, sixths, quarters, thirds, a halves and I can. that's the standard setting when it powers up but you can also alter it as I showed you earlier on the fly as well. So I'm going to set it to sixths. Pressing the options button again takes me on to another option. This is the standard time that the unit powers up with. At the moment it's set to 16 seconds and I can change it to something else. The next is an option that affects some users. It's called the delay option and this is for stabilized transformers which don't turn the enlarger on immediately but have about a hundred millisecond delay and this compensates for that in the time base of the stop clock. So there's two settings, on and off, and I'm going to use off because I have a straightforward transformer. And that takes you back to the beginning. And to clear, you hit the exit button. I'm going to move on to the two buttons on the right hand side, the set compensation and the split grade mode button. On this top one, the set compensation mode button, we saw earlier that by a simple press, 
it turns the compensation on and off. If I press and hold this, it actually displays what compensation is being used. In this case, minus 5%. And I can alter that up and down. And you can see that the percentage goes up and down. The time doesn't change when you use it, but the time base in the stop clock is altered when the compensation is active. When you're finished, you press the exit button and it stores that particular setting until you change it again. This button in the corner enters a unique mode for this stop clock, which is a split grade mode. With split grade printing, rather than a single exposure through a coloured filter, you make two separate exposures through two different colours. And you determine the exposure and the grade by doing test strips independently with each filter under the enlarger. So you have an exposure for the yellow filter and for the magenta, and you need them to stay at a constant ratio to keep a constant contrast. In the split grade mode, it links the two channels of the timer. Normally, when you flip channels, the times can be different, and if you change or alter one, the other channel stays the same. When you turn split grade on by pressing and holding the split grade button, the word split on comes up, the word soft comes up to tell you that this is the soft exposure, and the grade approximation, which flashed up very briefly there, of grade 1.2. And one channel has 16 seconds of the yellow filter, and the other channel now has 8.98 seconds. And you noticed also the word hard came up. So hard is associated with channel 2, and soft is associated with channel 1. And if you alter the time of one channel, and you flip channels, the other channel changes with it. So the ratio of the times stays the same, and the contrast of the result stays the same if you make the exposure through two separate print functions through the two different colour filters. So it sounds like a lot of faff, but it can be used to great creative advantage because during either the soft or the hard exposure, you can shade parts of the print and create local contrast changes with great ease. And this is explained in great detail in my book, Way Beyond Monochrome, and there's an extract of that on the website. So to cancel this mode, which has been indicated by the word split up there, a long press and hold of the button again, it says split off, and it returns to normal operation. And now the two channels are independent. To the left of these two buttons are the up and down buttons. And as we've seen, uh, pressing both together allows you to change the step size. And holding each of these buttons will just simply cycle through settings, either when it's setting the step size or just altering the exposure. You can just hold the button down. Now, one little feature on this, if you press both together and you go above half of a stop step, it goes to the word lin or linear, and a little indicator lights up on the display. And that means that now, when I change the time, it's going to go up and down in fractions of a second. And it goes up in tenths of a second, up to 20 seconds, and then in full seconds. So if you do need to make an exact time, there is a way of doing it. But this is an f-stop timer, and it's it's prefer to use f-stop timing for test strips. So this is really only used for special cases. Pressing both together, bring it back to a sixth of a stop, and it will now take me to standard f-stop times. Lastly, there are two buttons in the middle which are used for programming and clearing programs. A simple press of the store button enters the programming mode. It quickly tells you what step size is being used and tells you that you're in programming mode with the step number and an indicator at the top. This first step will be the first of the burn-in exposures and you alter it with single presses of the up and down buttons. So if I press this and hold this, it says C for compensation and two jumps because we're on sixths of a stop. 
and this is the number of steps in twelfths of a stop. So obviously a sixth is two twelfths. Pressing a second time tells me it's four. And when I release the button, it tells me the time that's going to be used, 4.16 seconds. And that's on top of the base time that was on the display when we entered the program function. If I store that, it then moves on to the second step. And again, I can put in whatever I want and then do that until I've completed the number of steps and program sequences that I need. Now, as soon as I leave one at zero, when the sequence plays back, when it comes across the first step at zero, it treats that as the end of the sequence. To exit that programming mode, I press the exit button. And if I want to clear the program, then I'd press the exit clear button again. At the moment, you can see that a program is active because it shows step zero. So briefly, if I had this particular sequence, I can press the start stop button and it will print the base exposure. So whilst that's doing that, it shows step zero and it counts down in time. When it gets to the end of that sequence, it will then work out what the next exposure is, which was 4.16 seconds. So I press the start stop button again and it, it prints the 4.16 seconds and so on. If I want to stop that, I can just press the clear button. If I reduce the base exposure, something clever happens. When I press start stop, it does the base exposure at 10 seconds. And when it gets to the end of the sequence, if I just wait a few seconds, the step size has also reduced. So I reduce the base exposure from 16 to 10 seconds, and now the step increment has also changed. So in other words, the program is doing a base, a base map in f-stops. So when you have a printing map in f-stops, you can print in the f-stop amounts into the timer, and no matter what your base exposure is, they all track. And that's a very powerful tool. If I want to stop the program, I press the exit button, and if I want to clear the program, I press the exit button a second time when step zero is being displayed.